right? They don't tell us what the function is. They do not tell us what f of x is, but like the other table problems we've had, they give us a select number of x values with their y values for whatever f of x is. And they ask us to approximate a left-hand Riemann sum, that's what that word is, Riemann, it's a big guy in calculus, um, it's just uh, another fancy way of saying approximate the area under the curve, okay? Uh, we're going to essentially, th this is left-handed rectangles, okay? Just in table form as opposed to graphical form, okay? Um, so, we are limited to the values that we're given here. Now, I do not suggest that you take time to um, graph this out every time, but I do want to give you this visual uh, the first time that we do this. So we've got x is 0, uh, y is 3, x is 2, y is 5, x is 3, y is 7, x is 4, y is 5, and x is 9, your y is back to 3. Now, I'm not going to connect these dots because I don't know what the function looks like. I just know these exact values, these select values right here. It wants a left-hand Riemann sum. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to draw my rectangles like I would if I had the entire function. Left hand, Riemann sum, start on the left side just like we do with our rectangles. Draw it to the next x value we have. We go from 0 to 2. That's going to be our first rectangle. Okay, so we go to the y value at 2. We go to the next x value at 3. So then we go to the y value at 3, we go to 4, and then we go from 4 to the last one, okay, we go from 4 to 9. Notice we are not going to use the y value at 9. Just like when we do the left-handed rectangles, we don't use the last y value, okay? Now, the difference between these and our left-handed rectangles, with left-handed rectangles, um, the intervals have the same width. With these problems, you're not necessarily going to have the same width for each partition because you're limited to the x values that they give you. So you got to be careful when you do these calculations. Let's calculate the area of that first rectangle. It has a height of 3. It has a width of 2. So it has an area of 6. The second one has a height of 5, but it has a width of 1. So it's an area of 5. The next one has a height of 7, has a width of 1, so that's an area of 7. The last one has a height of 5 and a width of 5, so that gives us 25. When we add all those together, um, we get 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 25, that's 18 plus 25, which is 43. Okay. That's the answer. Okay. That is approximating the sum. That, that's approximating the area under the curve for whatever this function is. Okay. No, we're, we're not. No. Nope. This is just straight up calculation problem. Okay. No application of it yet. That is the approximation of the definite interval from 0 to 9 of whatever f of x is. Okay, I'll look, I'll look at what she talked about because if all you can call it is, is crap, I don't know what she's talking about. So. Okay, okay, look, can, can, we, can we do this and then we'll, then we'll talk about what Kim was talking about. Okay. Um, so let's do this one without drawing it out. Okay, let's just take what we just learned and let's see if we can do it without drawing it out. So that means that our first one, our first interval right here, okay, it's left handed, so we use the y value from the left side, so that's 15. What's the width of that first interval? 1. From 0 to 1, it's 1. 
Okay, so our next one from 1 to 2. You use the y value from the left side, 11. It's another width of 1. 2 to 3. We use the y value of the left side of the interval, so 8. Its width is 1. 3 to 6. Its y value is 11. It has a width of 3. 6 to 8. Y value of the left side, 10. Width of 2. 8 to 13. Y value of the left side, 14. 8 to 13 is a width of 5. So we have 15 plus 11 plus 8 plus 33 plus 20 plus 70. So we've got 26 plus 41 plus 90 67 plus 90 157. These will most likely be calculator inactive questions just to give you the heads up there. Okay, so it's really, it, it's not that difficult, right, to do it without drawing the picture. You just Keep saying that, and that's why I repeated it every time, was so that you're saying that in your head, okay? So let's look at example two. Let's do the right-handed Riemann sum, okay? So again, right-handed Riemann sum, just like right-handed rectangles, we start on the right side of our interval and work our way to the left. So between nine and eight, we use the right side of the interval, so it's two, Width of 1, between 8 and 7, use the right side, 3 times width of the interval is 1. Between 7 and 5, <laughs> bless you, use the right side, width of 2. Between 5 and 1, use the right side, 6, width of 4. Between 1 and 0, use the right side, 5, width of 1. So we've got 5 plus 24 plus 10 plus 3 plus 2. So 29 plus 15, 44. Makes you feel trying to, what, doing all those numbers? Oh, we're backwards. <laughs> That's funny. You see those in third grade? I found out that I used everything backwards. So that was the fourth grade because I had to go backwards and like write something backwards. Oh, the sigma. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, um, let's do one more. Okay, doing the definite integral from zero to nineteen of this function. Again, when you see that, you should think area under the curve. When you have a table. You know, you're doing all the rectangles. So we've got from 19 to 14, use the right side, 12 times width of 5. 14 to 13, use the right side, 9, width of 1. 13 to 6, use the right side, 7, width is 7. Uh, 6 to 3, use the right side, 8, width is 3. Two, uh, 3 to 2, right side is 11, width of 1. 2 to 0, right side, 10, width is 2. So I've got 20 plus 11 plus 24 plus 49 plus 9 plus 60. Ooh, quite a few here. Um, we got 31 plus 67 plus 70 plus 69. Uh, so 104 plus 69, that equals 173. Woohoo! Okay, so um, apparently what Kim was talking about, the E thing that y'all are talking about is really sigma. Okay, y'all are talking about this, right? Okay, that is a symbol for sigma. Um, if you remember, I think we briefly talked about that in math. Three with sequences and series. That represents, anytime you see that, that means sum. Okay? Sigma equals sum. So she's using that notation because the definite integral is the area under the curve. We can find the area under the curve by 
summing up the area of all of our partitions, whether they're evenly di uh, divided partitions, whether using a table, um, they're not even, but they're still um, these different shapes, uh, whether we're using rectangles or trapezoids or midpoint rectangles, we are summing up all those areas. Now, the definite integral is the sum of all these when they have like virtually no width, okay? We learned that when you create more partitions, you get a more accurate approximation. Well, if your partitions are like so tiny that you don't have any over or under approximation, that's going to give you the exact area, okay? Um, so you are summing up all of these approximations of the area under the curve we're trying to make as many partitions as possible so that they don't have any width, they just have their height, and that's going to give us the exact area under the curve. So did that make a little bit more sense what she was talking about, why she was connecting this to a sum more? We're always adding all these areas up. Yes, sir. It would probably give you the closest one to the, yeah. If you averaged, um, I think if you average the left and the right, you get the same as the midpoint, I think. You would get the same approximation as the midpoint rectangles. Um, but yeah, if you kind of found all those approximations and averaged them together, it would get the closest. Um, obviously, trapezoids is the best. And then if you make them smaller, that gives you the better idea. Okay. So do you guys keep up that sheet and not see who's sitting in there? I put it up when we do. Okay, because I was yeah. about to say, I put it up when we do.